So the title of my presentation is, Dear Building, Let Me Introduce You to Building Management. Now that's a weird title, I agree. But I would say what is even more weird is that most buildings aren't actually managed today. So if you drive with your car on the street over the highway, how many of you have a little bit of a feeling how many liters per 100 kilometers you take with that car? How many of you think, what's the consumption? Yeah, okay, not too many. Gas price needs to still go up, I guess. <laughs> so, do you have the same level of transparency in your building? I think most of us do not have that, especially in commercial buildings. And that's surprising because we all know, I think this number is known to all of you guys, buildings consume 40% of the global energy. So there's a lot of reasons to care, not just for you individually, but also for the impact it has on the planet, on the environment, on society. But let's go back to the car example for one second. If I go very fast on the, let's say, German Autobahn, and I end up pretty quickly at the gasoline station, I know why. I know the reason, because the car tells me. Even in the early 2000s, cars would already tell me, look, if you drive faster, you spend more energy. But let me ask you this. If you have a commercial building that you guys work in, and it has one degree more heating, so it's one degree higher in the winter. Do you know how much more energy this costs? Do you have a feeling what that means for you and for your business? Many don't. Or let's take another example. You run the heating system full, but all the windows are open all the time. Is someone going to tell you, look, you run the heating system, but the windows are open? Maybe that's not efficient. It's interesting, when I was in France, we tried to find out in a field study what is the major reasons for building inefficiency. And you know what was one of the key things? Cooling and heating were on at the same time. Now that's an interesting battle. Someone probably from winter to summer forgot to turn off the boiler, but as it gets warmer, people want to cool the building, so they start cooling. And over the entire year, cooling and heating runs. So I guess that's what you call building management. That's where we have the problem. Now, of course, this is not true for all buildings. There's lots of buildings that have a lot of these things already. LEED certified buildings, modern airports, skyscrapers. You see a lot of efficient buildings today already. And we see those everywhere, also in our media, marketing. We say, oh, this is a great building. But let's look at the statistics. If you ask the European Union, they did a survey and they figured out that roughly 75% of all buildings in Europe run energy inefficient. And they also found out, usually this is not 3, 4, 5%, there is massive energy inefficiency. And for example, the German Umweltbundesamt said that in residential space, they could maintain the same level of quality in buildings, but save 60% of energy, 60%, if only the buildings were maintained and operated in a better way. So there's a lot we can do. Now, we talked a lot about isolation in the past and improving the building shell. We talked about HVC equipment efficiency a lot. And that's very essential. And I think also in the regulatory environment, a lot has happened in the last 10, 15 years here. And that's great. But what we haven't talked so much about is actually the management of the building. And that's what I simplify as do buildings have building management software? So if you take the car, do they have a steering wheel? and a speedometer. And what we found out is that roughly 80% of all buildings have no building management software. And that comes along with a lot of implications for the equipment that's also in the building. The equipment might go well, but it might also have issues. And oftentimes, especially in mid-sized commercial buildings, you really only find out that the equipment has an issue when the comfort level decreases. And then someone says, oh, look, I think we need to look at this, at this, uh, at this boiler. Something's wrong. But all, we all know that this problem usually started way before. The second thing is no easy view on energy. Yes, you have the monthly, the quarterly, the annual energy bill. You know roughly what the building consumes. But do you have the more direct feedback, like in your car? Do you have the feedback on a daily basis, weekly basis? Do you know where the energy is consumed in the building? Can you compare it to other buildings that are similar in their environment, you know, have similar 
shell and have the same weather. Very little transparency today for most building owners. And there is no remote management. In especially mid-sized buildings, there is no facility manager that is there 24-7. So remote connectivity is key. How do I get more centralized services to those buildings? And lastly, no end-user engagement. I can drive faster, and I know what it costs me, and I know what I do to the environment. I can drive slower, and I immediately get the feedback. But here in the building, we don't. So we behave in the building without this knowledge, so we also less incentivize to say, OK, maybe I can live with 19.5 degree in my office building versus 20.5, and I save so much energy, and that's good. So engaging the user, the tenant, requires also that there is more continuous feedback. This is the energy you consumed. So who can equip the other 80% of buildings in the world with a BMS? That's the question that I ask myself. And the first thought I had, OK, let's have the BMS players do that. That makes sense, right? They brought BMS into the other 20% of buildings. Why not the, now the 80% that is left? The challenge is the technology is not built for that. It's too complex in engineering and operation. And those companies that were in the BMS, BAS environment, they don't have the access to those buildings traditionally. They haven't done this in the past. Then I thought, OK, who has access to the buildings? Huh? The electrical players. Every building has an electrical cabinet. So the good news here is they are in the building. The bad news is they don't know the HVAC. And they also don't have the technology. And then I thought, there's another one that I could think of. And this is you guys. This is the HVAC equipment players. You are in those buildings because all these buildings have HVAC equipment. You know HVAC by heart, which is the biggest energy consumer in a building. The only thing that you miss is the technology. But the good news is there's companies like us and also some others that can provide you this technology. So this can become an incredibly interesting market segment for you. And as you also see from everything I said previously, it has also so much value to society. Now, what does such a BMS need to look like? So the installer is the perfect person to bring that BMS into the building. They have brought the HEC equipment into the building. They maintain the service contract. So it needs to be simpler. They don't like the complex system integrator type of integration, and they can't do that. They need to move from spaghetti integration more to plug and play. And the second is, the facility manager is oftentimes not really a facility manager. It's maybe the math teacher that has volunteered and said, OK, I do uh, between my one and my other math class, I do the energy efficiency for this building, or I maintain this. So it needs to be simplified, simple dashboards, very easy transparency. Does my building have any problems? What is the energy consumed? Is there any easy tricks? And if there's a problem, then give me a signal and tell me who I need to call so I can fix this. So in a nutshell, I believe that in order to tackle the energy crisis, the building market is of incredible relevance. That 80% of all buildings in the commercial segment have no steering wheel and speedometer to me is a problem. And I think we need to solve that. And I see you guys in the prime position to make that happen. I would encourage you to go in this market and do it. Thank you.